And here we are coming to you live from our top secret broadcasting bunker here at Area 52. Broadcasting just outside of the danger zone in New Orleans, Louisiana. We're staying away from the Fat Tuesday people. Um, and my wife woke up this morning. She was listening to the news. She's going, Fat Tuesday, Fat Tuesday. Yeah, that seems to be the day for me. Um, anyway, I'm going to be – Fat Tuesday, comprehend this in your mind, if you would, just for a minute. Just think about this for a minute. The, the largest worldwide religious institution in the world, alongside of Islam, <clears throat> which they're for first cousins, by the way, the largest religious institution in the world, Roman Catholicism, basically has this idea that – um, you're gonna, since you're going to give up stuff anyway for Lent, why don't you, on the day before Lent, why don't you do everything under the sun that you can think of at least twice or three times on the day before Lent? That's what Mardi Gras is. Pardon my French, <clears throat> but that's what that is. And uh, Fat Tuesday, of course, as you know, a lot of big happenings going on. It seems to be the center of decadence down in New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, I have never been to New Orleans, do not want to go to New Orleans. Um, if you remember, who was it? The chaplain of Bourbon Street. I can't remember his name. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> he uh, ministered. This is what I understand. I may not be totally right on this. The chaplain of uh, Bourbon Street sets up a, a church down there ministering to people um, in New Orleans in the in the French Quarter in the probably the roughest area in the whole country and um, supposedly is leading all these people to Christ well he succumbs to some of the wiles of the devil while he's down there and has somewhat of a fall and I believe that before he died uh, he made amends with the Lord, which is a good thing, and I think it's a, a evidence of a good God who would do that for him. Uh, but anyway, never had any, never had any idea of wanting to go down there. Mardi Gras just never, that never dawns on me. I never think that way, to think, well, let's see, since I'm going to church tomorrow, and that's Sunday, maybe, maybe today on Saturday. I think I'll go gamble and visit bars and hook up with women and I'll smoke cigarettes and cigars and drink whiskey and do all that stuff because tomorrow now I'm going to go repent of all of it and give it all up or at least pretend to give it all up. And that's what uh, that's what Fat Tuesday is all about. And then we're settling into the day before the Lenten season. And I am, as as per my tweet announcement, I am going to be dealing with that today. And I've got a lot of information to give to share with you today. Um, so I'm going to try to get into it. There was a couple things on Drudge Report that I thought was interesting. And yes, I've heard about the Pope. I'm going to talk about him in a minute. Um, but uh, in Pyongyang, uh, North Korea, the child emperor of North Korea um, has set off a nuclear bomb. It's another nuclear test. And is he just trying to show off how big and powerful he is? I mean, if, you, if you've ever seen this kid, he looks exactly like that. He looks like a little kid. Um, and he's daddy's little spoiled brat. Now he's running a country, and he's going to try to prove to everybody. He reminds me of uh, the son of Solomon, who was that, Rehob Rehoboam, um, who decided to carry his daddy's tax um, burden on the people to an extreme and decided to get mean with the people, and he's going to force them to respect him. Uh, that's who this kid reminds me of, and he is probably a very dangerous human being. If you know anything about North Korea, I watched a documentary on North Korea one time, and I just sat and shook my head in disbelief that a uh, a nation could exist in the world in, in this day and age that is nothing but pure evil, pure evil to its own people. Uh, such totalitarian dictatorship 
uh, in so much that if you question anything that goes on in North Korea, you find yourself in a camp, you find yourself, you not only you, but they have this generational thing, you, everybody in your family, your children and your grandchildren all have to go to a camp or be killed because because of your poisonous ideas against the god who is the little boy king of North Korea. And um, the Drudge Report has um, an interesting spin on all this. They've got about uh, what looks like about 10 articles dealing with the uh, nuclear explosion or the nuclear test in uh, North Korea, and they, they equate it with uh, 2013, the year of the serpent. We talked about that Thursday. It is something that I think should be watched. I think that something I think we should watch what's going on and be ready for just about anything. Um, let's see here. Lightning strikes the Vatican, St. Peter's Cathedral just hours after the Pope resigned. Uh, when I woke up, what was that? Yesterday morning, woke up yesterday morning. And hearing that uh, while I was asleep, which was kind of rude. I mean, if you're going to resign as Pope, at least wait until I wake up so I can see what's going on. But anyway, Pope Benedict resigned from office or is in the process of resigning from office. Uh, his last day probably will be February the 28th. He's supposed to be out within a month. I don't know if he didn't pay rent on the room. I don't know if um, you know. I don't know if he found a wife and is getting married. I mean, who? I don't know what's going on. The thing is, we don't know what goes on in the Vatican. They're very. They are one of the world's largest secret societies, and that is absolutely true. In case you don't know. Those of uh, any high rank in the Vatican, they are occultists, many of them are Freemasons. Um, there's a, a constant power struggle going on in the Vatican. Uh, it, it doesn't resemble Bible Christianity to, to any degree whatsoever. There is no Pope in the Bible. There, that doesn't exist. The office of Pope or the Grand Pontiff, Pontifus Maximus, or whatever they call it, does not exist in the Scripture. It was never intended that one man rule over all of Jesus' disciples. That's absolutely ludicrous. And uh, to me, it's, it's rather offensive that these people call themselves Bible Christians when, according to the Bible that defines Christianity, they are not, in fact, Christians. But it is one of the world's largest occult organizations, one of the world's largest secret societies, and there's no way in the world that you or I would ever really know what's going on out, and I'm going to say this, and I want you to listen to me. There is no way that you or I can ever know what goes on behind closed doors in the Vatican, but by the absolute sure word of prophecy, the word of God, that reveals all all of the deep and secret things. Now, I'm not going to deal with this today, but I am going to let you know where I stand so that between today and let's say Thursday, Thursday I probably will deal with this issue. Between today and Thursday, you can write me your emails, you can send me what you think is your evidence, you can do all this stuff. I had a uh, talk with a Canadian friend of mine yesterday, and uh, he started talking, I said, stop right here, stop right here. And I gave him my opinion, and I said, I'm going to be bullheaded, I'm going to be stubborn on this issue. And uh, we had a good talk, we're st still good friends, I love him to death, and so on. Um, but anyway... As soon as I got up yesterday morning and I'm hearing that Pope Benedict is is getting out of office, we're going to have a new pope probably within a month or so, whatever, however long it takes for the, the white smoke to rise up out of the chimney, um, I, I just going, okay, here we go. Because there is, as probably many of you know, there is a document out there. Um, and it's called the, uh, it's from uh, some Catholic saint, quote, unquote, named uh, Saint Malachi. Um, and allegedly, and I say allegedly, because there is very little evidence that this particular saint, quote, unquote, 
actually wrote this in the, I think, in the 1500s or something like that. The Catholic Church does not recognize this document as being legitimate. Um, it, you can, and you can look this up. But there is a document floating around about uh, supposedly written by this St. Malachi guy that is a prophecy, quote, unquote, of all of the popes that were going to be from his time all the way to the last pope. And according to the document, the prophecy, um, we're now at the second to the last pope, and there is going to be one right after that, Petrus Romanus, or Peter the Roman. Uh, Tom Horn has written a book on it. He uh, sent me an advanced copy before it came out. Um, I read part of it. Uh, there were some things in there that I disagreed with, and so I did not endorse it. That's neither between that's neither here nor there. There's all kinds of things people write that I don't agree with. All kinds of things that I say that some people don't agree with. So that's no big deal. Um, but I um, I am not I am not on the Petrus Romanus bandwagon. I'm not. I'm not on the Petrus Romanus chuck wagon, the bandwagon, meat wagon. I'm not. I'm not there. And I. And for one really good reason, I, why I am not there. Um, and the the whole idea behind the Petrus Romanus prophecy, quote unquote, is that this this next pope, this one showing up right here with the white smoke is uh, either the Antichrist, depends on who you listen to, or the false prophet, depending on who you listen to. And it's, and it's going to be a fulfillment of, of Scripture. Um, and I'm going to be bullheaded. I'm going to be stubborn. I'm going to be, uh, I am from Missouri, so you're going to have to show me. That's the motto of, of the state of Missouri, show me. We're the show me state. You got something, then prove it, all right? So um, I am not I'm not on that that frame of mind for one reason. The prophecy, quote unquote, of Saint Malachi is not from Peter, James, John, Matthew, Luke, Isaiah, Hosea, um, e Elijah, Enoch, Moses, David, Solomon. It's not in the pages of the scriptures. It does not exist. And a, a general rule that I have for this ministry and for um, the, uh, the things that I try to teach, if it's not in the Bible, it doesn't exist. It's not, it's, it, I, if you can't prove it to me scripturally, then I'm, I'm not going to deal with it. I'd like to, I have to stick with scripture. I cannot, I cannot, um, endorse, nor can I uh, float out there the idea that there is a secret document or a document called the line of the popes from St. Malachi that could be real. I mean, uh, this, I mean, this could be, this could be the, the, the big thing to watch for. I can't do that. 